got started with uh, Mustangs in general around 16 years old. I've always liked them. Uh, Mustangs have been an, an affordable muscle car. And um, quite frankly, you know, at that age, I didn't have the, the funds to build something like this. Um, the Fastback Mustang has always been a, a very desirable car, no matter what. So I attempted to build one. Um, it's been about uh, probably 10 or 11 years ago. Um, built a very nice car, took it to Barry Jackson, uh, sold the car. Uh, upon selling it, I ended up taking an order for a couple of cars, um, which was really nice. So that, that really started Classic Recreations at that time. Um, I've always had a passion for for cars in general, whether it be a Mustang or it be a Camaro or whatever. I've always found that that particular car, once again, has some incredible body lines. So I've pushed that car, pushed that car even harder. Um, we met Shelby uh, approximately six or seven years ago. Um, I've always been a big, huge Shelby fan. It's been a dream of mine to become and build those cars. We met them with a licensing agreement, um, hashed that out, and designed the GT500CR, and uh, here we are today. On that uh, licensing agreement, it seems like uh, a lot of people don't have that. Um, why was that important to you? And... I've always wanted to build a real Shelby, and the licensing agreement was important to me in order to build a real car um, legally. Um, to actually use these marks that are and have been used since the 60s um, by Shelby. As we all know, amongst all cars and a lot of these out there, there are a tremendous amount of people that um, copy or clone or whatever you want to call that. And um, it's nice to be able to identify our cars as authentic or real, um, not fake or clones. And so that was important to me to be able to push that out. I believe it's um, an important aspect of the investment of our cars. Um, I believe that it also increases uh, value, hence the investment, um, and it will continue to do that forever. So it, it's important to me. That, that was what was really important to me, is to be able to say, mine are real. What do you think separates uh, Classic Recreations Mustangs from the dude just doing it in his garage on some Craigslist car? You know, I'm a huge fan of a guy building his own car. I, quite frankly, I go to car shows, look at those cars. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that somebody has a passion to do that. I think it's awesome. Um, I go to car shows. I've been judges at Mustang shows. I see these clones that an individual has built in his garage. And quite frankly, I, I, I find it flattering. I think it's awesome. Um, you know, where I don't think it's awesome is a company building the same car and profiting from it. There's a huge difference between that and a fan or somebody that loves building it for themselves and the passion of that. So what separates me from that, um, we're a production facility. We have R&D uh, that we spend on these cars, time, money. Um, these products fail. Uh, we find out what fails. We make it a better car. That really separates us from you know a small shop that's that's doing one or two a year, you know whatever one-off cars, and that they, they haven't really tried and true the car, all the products put into the car, all the aftermarket components. And as you know, there are a tremendous amount of aftermarket components that go into these cars. So I believe that that separates us from that. Um, secondly. Um, we believe in our hearts that uh, the cars we produce um, are, are second to none. I mean, they're, they're, you know, as far as quality goes, once again, when you're doing the same product over and over and over again for six years, then it tends to, tends to be a better product in the end. These cars have been through a lot of American history, uh, and a lot of markets that you're selling to didn't originally get the Mustang in the 60s, yet I've seen a lot of them going to Europe, Middle East, mm -hmm. Australia. What's the draw there? For you them? know, I believe once again that it's Shelby, number one. I believe people want an authentic Shelby vintage vehicle. Um, 
that they can drive every day. It's fuel injected, air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, you know, modern amenities you would expect in today's cars. I believe that's that's what they're you know what what they're trying to achieve. So I think in the Middle East and Europe and Asia, um, which is a, a big part of our business, I believe that they buy these cars because it's something really cool to drive. It's very reliable and it's an investment. Um, it's something they've noticed that. You know they don't lose that twenty percent that they lose that they're going to lose on a, on a European sports car. Um, that doesn't happen. These cars actually bring more money than what they bought them for. So I think that's been it. And then also what you refer to as American heritage. It's I mean this is obviously one of the most popular muscle cars in the world. A GT five hundred sixty seven model car. I believe still is rated number two or three in the top most popular muscle cars. Um, I think that that will never change. The body lines of that car are just incredible. I think they're one of the best. Um, there, with the Eleanor especially, it seems like there's a Gone in 60 Seconds connection there, the, the 2000 movie. Uh, I left that theater thinking, awesome car, awesome chasing. Um, was there was that any part of it of your thought process there? Um, the Eleanor car wasn't the GT five hundred, um, an authentic one for that. Um, you know, they referred to it as that several times in the movie, but I think it's a beautiful car. Um, I do believe that it definitely uh, brought attention to the Mustang fastback. But I don't believe it did anything for the Shelby side of the car. No, I I think that the Shelby brand stands strong in its own, and I believe the GT500, you know, is what inspired a large part of that car, um, and several other cars kind of sparked from it. So, do I think the Eleanor car is a great car? I think it's a beautiful car. Um, it's not a it's not a Shelby. Um, never has been. Never will be. Um, you know, so I kind you know, that car in itself, we did build under license. Um, I'm very proud of the fact we did that. Um, we've moved on. We've now built the Shelby cars, which to me is, you know, apples and oranges. Um, we're now building a real authentic Shelby car compared to a clone or a unicorn or knockoff or whatever. Um, these cars have always been inspired over, you know, since the early 60s by Shelby. So if you look at designs from, uh, I can go on from other manufacturers, it's quite, quite interesting how they've really derived a lot from the old 67 GT500. And in my opinion, you even look at some of the new Mustangs, I, I think they're, they're pulling from that as well. So. Is there something uh, equivalent new you can get from a manufacturer that is equivalent to these, or are they just entirely new? I'm really excited, uh, really, really stoked up, man. I, I'm anxious to see the new 350R in person. I've seen a lot of pictures of it. Man, that car looks just sick. So uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see. I do believe that that's going to stand up. You know, you still have the Super Snakes, which Shelby Automotive does to a GT500 car, which, I mean, you know, as far as power is concerned, it blow one of the 67 GT500 cars off the road. Um, does it have the styling of that car? Mm, not really. I think the new 350R and the new stuff that Ford is doing with the new Mustang, I believe they're pulling a lot of the old heritage back into the car, which is awesome. How customized can you get with your cars uh, as far as options? If somebody wants something crazy, it's it's okay? Absolutely. Um, we have two brands. We have Classic Recreations, which builds the Shelby car. Then we have CR Supercars, which does the Villain, uh, the Camaro, and anything custom. You can order a, whatever. You can order a Power Wagon Dodge with a new Cummins diesel and I don't really care. CR Supercars was designed to accommodate that customer that wanted anything he wanted. Um, with the Shelby cars, I mean the same thing goes. I mean, 
I've had people do some of the strangest options and we'll do that as well. We're not going to go, you know, away from the actual aesthetics of the car. I won't change those. I've had people ask. I'm not going to change that. That's the aesthetics of the, you know, the ex exterior uh, part of the car and that's what it needs to look like. Um, but uh, on the inside and then some strange options all the way from, you know, radar blockers to you name it. Um, we've had people request. Uh, speaking of the Camaro, um, that's like the third time I've heard it mentioned there. Uh, what's the deal there? We're anxious to do that. You know, we're known for doing Mustangs, um, and I still want to be known for doing Mustangs, but I want to prove to the world that we can do something other than a Mustang, so um, we're hopefully going to debut that car this year at SEMA uh, in the Center Force Clutches booth. Um, it's a 69 Camaro-based car, Detroit Speed Suspension, Forge Line three-piece wheels, LS7 powered. Um, we just want to kind of bring out our design and show, you know, our take on a 69 Camaro. So we're anxious to introduce that. While I was researching you guys, um, I n noticed an interview about five years back. You were saying there were some stupid laws regarding anti-theft laws that are attacking shops. And you were wanting progress made by Oklahoma laws to get that fixed. Has there been any progress there or are they still kind of vague? It's not regarding theft, it's actually regarding the restoration of a vehicle. And yes, I've actually um, helped write a law which is enacted in the state of Oklahoma now. Um, it's the rebody law. Basically, it's such a great area in restorations around the entire globe um, of how you can do a car. You know, what is the, what is the whole, I mean, how can you restore it? What can you can you know can't do and what can you do? Um, I think the crazy thing about the whole restoration process is is I believe the builder or restoration shop around the world would have to have intent to do something wrong to be accused of it. Um, if you have intent of doing something, then I can see what the purpose is. But if you have no intent of doing anything wrong, um, and you restore your car, I, I just don't see the, I think that's madness. So we wrote a law or helped write a law. Um, it was really neat. Um, I got to be involved with some uh, state legislators and representatives and got to go down to the Capitol and speak and people questioned. And what I found really interesting about that is Democrats and Republicans all came together and smiled. Um, they were asking questions. They thought it was really cool. We're talking about muscle cars. We're talking about, you know, and, and everybody was interested. It, it, it wasn't like one side or the other. Um, it was a Republican authored bill, but we had one nay uh, a Democrat. That was it. And they weren't even there. Um, so I found that, and, and, and even the gentleman that, that authored the bill said, that's amazing. Everybody voted yes. So. We came together and saw that something's cool, and we all agreed, and I think that's just awesome. Um, that was an experience that I don't probably never forget. Um, but unfortunately, not only in Oklahoma, there are so many instances of restoration shops, mom and pop restoration shops, getting uh, accused of and and uh, you know hurt and damaged. Um, for, for they didn't do anything, you know. They didn't intentionally do anything um, in the restoration of a car that had no intent. Uh, so, it, I hopefully I helped. I do believe that the law that I helped write will um, be adopted in other states. Um, it already has been in a few, so I hope it just keeps on spreading. And with the help of SEMA, you know, with current legislation as well, I really think this is kind of smoothed over, and everybody has a better definition. If it weren't for the fans, even the guys that don't even buy our cars, we wouldn't exist. I'm serious. Because those are the guys that push, you know, hard. Those are the guys that are fans and love the cars and love the products and tell us, you know, those are kick ass and, you know, these cars are great. And really, man, that that's what fuels our fire. Um, and we know that most of them couldn't even buy a car. But that's okay. Um, so, you know, that and and. Without our crew, there's no way we could do this. Um, 
It's, this isn't just me. This, you know, this is everyone here. If it weren't for these guys in each one of these shops that you visited today, there's no way these cars would be here. That includes my dad, that includes press in the office, that includes everybody. I mean, we're all big teams, so it's kind of cool that we can all come together and, you know, and create this, this whole thing. So...